How's it going guys? It's K Cars and in this video I want to talk to you guys about the brand new cooling system that I have on my 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ. So if you guys have been following along with my Jeep here on the channel then you'll know that I have been having a few overheating issues and basically for the past few weeks all my videos have been talking about the cooling system on this Jeep and we finally got everything replaced. So let's go ahead and go over all the parts here. So as you guys know uh, we did get most of the cooling parts replaced on this Jeep here. So we got a brand new water pump, thermostat, thermostat housing, upper and lower radiator hoses, serpentine belt, idler pulley, electric fan, and a coolant flush. So in this video, I also want to talk about all the prices for parts and labor that I paid as well as the shop that I went to to get all this work done. So the first time that I actually drove this Jeep out of the shop after getting all these parts installed, I noticed like a big difference in the temperature that this Jeep was running at. Whenever I drove it that first time, uh, the temperature outside was about 100 degrees. So a very good test to see how this cooling system would hold up in that kind of heat. Now about a month ago, uh, this Jeep was driven in like 90 degree heat uh, it was running a little bit over 210. It was sitting right at that first mark after 210. I'm not sure exactly what temperature that's at, but it's definitely over the normal operating temperature. Whenever that happened, it kind of sounded like it was misfiring. It was definitely running very rough. And back then my electric fan wasn't working at all. So it was definitely not good. And one other thing that the mechanic told me is that the coolant level was very low. So that's obviously that also played a big part in the overheating issues that we've had like i said first drive after getting these parts installed a huge difference it was running consistently right below 210 which is what it should be doing and on top of that we were driving in 100 degree weather so it was definitely a very good test to see how this jeep would hold up and it held up just fine so definitely happy with all of these things one thing that i will say is that Whenever I was stopped at a red light for a few minutes, it did creep up just above 210, but of course that's when the electric fan kicked on and then it dropped right below 210 as soon as I started driving again. So really no issues and it's running exactly how it should be right now. So let's go ahead and go more in depth into these parts here. So of course, first off, we do have a new thermostat, which is right over here. You can't actually see the thermostat right now, this little silver part right here is the thermostat housing. So right there, you can definitely see it's a new part just because of how colored it is. You can kind of compare it to uh, all the other like very faded parts here. You can definitely tell that the housing is definitely new. So for all these parts, I did decide to just keep it 100% stock and OEM. So with the thermostat, I did get a genuine Mopar replacement and it is a 195 degree thermostat. So I know a few people do go with like 185 or 160. Uh, I decided to just go with stock because I know a lot of people say that the stock cooling system works the best when it actually works. So I decided to just go with a stock 195 thermostat, um, all Mopar of course. So that's what I have for the thermostat right there. Now moving on to the water pump. You can see the water pump is a little bit deeper right over here. Also, of course, a Mopar water pump. I wanted to keep everything 100% genuine Mopar parts. So that is the water pump right there. Along with the water pump, we also did get a brand new coolant inlet tube, which you can kind of see right over here. It's this little black pipe or tube right here that comes from the water pump. And it connects right over here to this hose that uh, runs right above the coil pack right there. So that's new as well. So we have that water pump right there. Definitely is gonna help. Before I got this new water pump installed, I was noticing that it was kind of like squeaking maybe. Um, I wasn't sure if it was the water pump or not, but there was kind of like a high pitched squeaky noise coming from the front of the Jeep. It didn't sound like the belt. It sounded like something else spinning. So I kind of just assumed that it was the water pump. So we got that replaced right there and it doesn't squeak anymore. So that's definitely good. So moving on, we also do have brand new upper and lower radiator hoses. So of course, here's the upper one. They did use the stock clamps right here, as you can see. Uh, we got this little protective cover as well. And yeah, these are definitely solid hoses right here. And then you can see right over here, can't really see it too well, but it connects to the radiator right there on the upper part. And the lower hose, is right down there if you guys can see that so 
this lower hose, um, the stock ones actually have a spring inside of them. And this new one, I don't believe it actually came with a spring inside of it because I can, whenever I try to pinch it with my hand, I can actually like compress it with my hand. Uh, whenever I tried that with the stock one, I could easily feel that there was a spring inside of it. And I talked to the mechanic that was doing the install and asked if they could just transfer over that spring to the new one if it didn't come with one. And he said they're usually extremely rusty and they just fall apart whenever you try to take them out. So he didn't do that. He said if the new one does not come with a spring, then they're usually pretty reinforced to not have those collapsing issues. So this one should be good, hopefully. Um, I'm hoping to not have any collapsing issues with this lower hose because it does not have that um, spring inside of it like the stock one did. So if you guys can see right down there, they also did use the stock hose clamp for this as well. So not bad here. I definitely wanted to get these uh, hoses replaced. I figured it wouldn't hurt to just put new hoses on there because I don't believe that the stock ones were replaced yet. So. Just figured it would be a good idea to go ahead and get those replaced as well. There's not much else to say about the hoses. We can move on to the belt. So the belt obviously runs right over here and it basically moves all your pulleys and your accessories that you have on here. Uh, you can see there's a pulley right connected to the water pump right there. So the reason that I wanted to get a new belt is because they had to take off the uh, old belt to actually get the water pump off and everything. So I figured it wouldn't hurt to get a new belt. I don't know the last time that this one was replaced. I figured it wouldn't hurt to actually do that. We also did get a new idler pulley. Now I actually didn't request to get the pulley replaced. The mechanic just suggested that I do get it replaced because in his experience, whenever they take off the belt and pulleys, uh, then the idler pulley usually has to be replaced. So I went ahead and agreed to that. So we got a new belt and idler pulley and haven't had any issues with those. Uh, doesn't squeak at all so pretty happy with that and the last thing we got done was a coolant flush so whenever I went to pick the Jeep up the mechanic told me that the coolant was actually very low surprisingly low and he asked me about the head gasket and I'm actually not sure if the head gasket has ever been replaced in this Jeep I know it hasn't been replaced in the past year and a half that I've had it so it's really hard to say if it's been replaced or not but he said usually low coolant like that could mean that the head gasket might need to be replaced. He said it's not really anything to be worried about right now, just something to keep an eye on. So if the coolant level keeps going down, then maybe a head gasket replacement is something that would need to be done in the future. So we'll just keep an eye out on that. But of course we got the coolant flushed and when it comes to the radiator i told them just to inspect it and if it needed to be replaced i wanted to get the spectra oem replacement radiator for these things i heard that's pretty much the best oem replacement radiator that you can get for the xj and he said he didn't really see a reason to replace the radiator it was still pretty clean on the inside and most people that i talked to about this have said if it ain't broke don't fix it so I was fine with just keeping the stock radiator if they didn't find anything wrong with it. Now for the electric fan, this is something that I replaced. It was easy enough for me to do in the parking garage with minimal tools. So I have a tutorial video on how to replace this thing, but uh, the stock one that I had on this, it actually did not spin at all. It had a huge amount of resistance, like it was hard to even spin it by hand. But as you can see right here, this one spins very easily and it comes on when it's supposed to. Uh, which I believe is around 218, which is right above 210. And it has been coming on right above 210, so it definitely works. So with all that, the Jeep has been running perfectly fine. Even in 100 degree weather, stop and go traffic, it has been sitting right below 210, unless I'm stopped for a few minutes and it creeps a little bit above, but that's when the electric fan kicks on. And then as soon as I start driving, it drops right below 210 once again, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. And like I said, I did go ahead and get completely stock OEM Mopar replacement parts. I've heard that's the best way to go when uh, working on Jeeps like this. It's basically what they work best with. A lot of people say that the engineers that work and design these Jeeps, they knew what they were doing. So it's just best to go ahead and keep the OEM Mopar replacement parts. I know a lot of people get like Mishimoto performance radiators or like replace the mechanical fan with an electric fan. Uh, that's definitely, you know, it's a good idea if that's what you want to do. But for me, I think I would like to just keep the stock parts right here that I have. And when it comes to the mechanical fan and the fan clutch, 
I didn't get it replaced because this one seems to be working just fine. I haven't had any issues with it. It has the proper amount of resistance. But I didn't really see a need to replace that. And if I ever do have to replace it, it's not something that the coolant has to be drained for. So I decided I don't have to do that. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and take the Jeep on a little drive here and show you guys how it does. It is currently 86 degrees right now. So not extremely hot, but definitely not cold as well. So as of right now, we are one mark below 210 and we'll see how it holds up. All right guys, so we are currently sitting here at this red light and let me show you guys the temperature gauge here. So as you can see, it's definitely sitting right below 210 and now we're gonna start driving and let me show you guys how it changes. So it's right below 210 right now and as soon as we start driving and getting some more airflow into the Jeep, See, I mean, I can visibly see that it's going down. Let me show you guys. So, I don't know how well you guys can tell, but the temperature definitely went down a little bit less just by like driving and getting more airflow for the Jeep. So it's definitely working exactly how it should be right now. Yeah, I mean, even with slow driving, it also stays below 210. It's only when I sit like at a stoplight for a few minutes, like several minutes, probably like, I don't know, I wanna say like five minutes if I'm stopped. That's when we'll go above 210, but other than that, it stays right below 210. Like right now, I'm driving really slow and I'm stopped right here. And you can see it's right below 210 right now. If I continue sitting here for a little bit longer, we'll see if it'll go up. But, you know, even if it does go above 210 and it hits 218, that's when the electric fan is supposed to turn on. Got a nice XJ right there. That was nice. That was a pre-97 XJ too. That was nice. But yeah, we can keep sitting here. And like I was saying, if it does go above 210 and it hits 218, that's when the electric fan will kick on and cool it down back below 210. Or if you just start driving and give the Jeep more airflow, it'll also go below 210. Which is exactly what I experienced on the 100 degree day whenever I picked this thing up and drove it back home. So right now we've been sitting here for about a minute and you can see the temperature gauge did rise up just a little bit, but it's just barely below 210 and it is rising a little bit. But yeah, the only time that it really does rise is when you're sitting here for an extended period of time and when it's hot out. So like today, I showed you guys it's 86 degrees Fahrenheit right now and it's running just fine right now. Like the electric fan still hasn't kicked on it's right on 210 right now and I can see it going up just a little bit we'll see if we sit here even longer if we can get the fan to turn on but probably not because of all those new cooling parts that we have now it's just gonna not even require the electric fan anymore so yeah I mean right there you can see it's sitting right at 210 right now we've been sitting here for about two minutes and no issues whatsoever and as soon as we start driving get on this road here and I'll show you guys how it drops pretty quickly all right so we're getting back on the road here and the temperature gauge is sitting right at 210 right now I'll show you guys that right there and yeah I mean I can visibly see that it's dropping right now so it's definitely good as soon as you get some more airflow into the Jeep the temperature does go down so it's going down even more right now Let's see if you guys can see that Yeah, it's sitting right below 210 right now, which is exactly how it should be. So yeah, I mean, really no issues with these new cooling parts, and it's running exactly how it should be. All right, so now I'm going to talk about the part that a lot of people are interested in, which is how much did I pay for all this? So I'm looking at the invoice right here. All this work was done at Dirt Nerds Motors in Sterling, Virginia. They specialize in Jeeps and off-road vehicles. So I figured for a repair like this, it would be best to take it to somebody who knows these XJs inside and out. And they do all kinds of repairs, fabrication, off-road modifications, and general maintenance as well. So recommend that shop if you guys are in the Northern Virginia area and you also have a Jeep or an off-road vehicle. So let's go ahead and talk about the prices here. So the water pump for labor, they charge 1.7 hours, $187. Uh, the water pump with the gasket was $125 for the part. 
The little tube was $55. The tube that goes from the water pump to the little hose right there, that was above the coil pack that I showed you guys. The thermostat uh, was 0.7 hours, so $77 uh, for that in labor. The thermostat part was 39. Thermostat housing was 53. The housing gasket was about $5. Now for the radiator hoses, uh, they charge 0.7 hours, which is $77 for labor. The upper hose was 62, lower hose was 76. Now for the serpentine belt, they charged half an hour for that, $55. The actual belt was $36. The idler pulley was $70, and they charged 0.2 hours and $22 for that. Coolant flush. Uh, so the coolant flush, they charged 1.3 hours, $143, and the coolant was $13, just for the actual liquid. I also did get charged for a tensioner pulley, which I believe is separate from the idler pulley. Definitely let me know down in the comments what that is. But yeah, we did get charged for two separate pulleys here. Now the tensioner pulley, they charged 0.4 hours or $44. And for the actual pulley, it was $38. So altogether for all this work, it was $1,286 in total. So Dirt Nerds Motors in Sterling, Virginia, that's where we got all these cooling parts replaced. So they definitely seem like a pretty good off-road shop and also for general maintenance and repairs for Jeeps and off-road vehicles. Now I know what a lot of you guys might be thinking is that taking a Jeep like this to a shop to get this stuff professionally installed it could be a waste of money to some people. Now the way I look at it is that I rely on this Jeep to actually get around. So I didn't really want to teach myself how to do this stuff and do something wrong and give myself bigger problems to have to worry about. So I decided to just take it to a shop to make sure it's done professionally and right instead of trying to learn on a vehicle that I rely on to get around. Uh, sometime in the future, I definitely would like to uh, get it like a garage, uh, like a garage space to actually work on vehicles and a bunch of tools to do all this stuff on my own. So yeah guys, I'm definitely gonna be posting update videos on how the Jeep is doing after a few weeks of driving it with all these new cooling parts. It definitely is pretty hot around here. It's been like 90s and 100. Uh, like I said, the first day that I drove it back from the shop, it was 100 degrees and it was running right below 210, which is perfect for this Jeep. I definitely would not have been able to do that before getting all these parts installed, especially that electric fan. So yeah, it's definitely been running very good, very reliable right now. I definitely don't have any complaints. So now that we took care of the cooling system on this Jeep, which has been the main subject around my channel for like the past month, you guys might be asking, what's next for the Jeep? So before I ran into all the cooling issues, I was talking about getting the rear bumper replaced because of all the rust. So let me show you guys again here. We got a few rust patches here. But that right there is the main issue that I want to get taken care of. So that's definitely on the to-do list. Definitely want to get that done sometime. I also do want to replace these bumper end caps because they are pretty faded. Mostly just the front ones you can see right here. So yeah, I would like to get these replaced sometime. And I know a lot of people say that you can just paint them or ceramic coat them. I have thought about that, but I would definitely like to just get brand new ones. I feel like they would look a little bit better than just painting them. Now, something else that I have been looking into is getting an upgraded headlight harness. I know people have said that it um, maximizes the output of your headlights, so I still have to do some more research on that, but if you guys are knowledgeable on an upgraded headlight harness, definitely let me know down in the comments. Another issue that I've been having with these headlights is that the bottom row of LEDs actually flickers on both headlights. So I don't know, maybe the upgraded harness will uh, stop that. I'm hoping at least. So if you guys know, definitely let me know down in the comments. But that is definitely something else on my list. Something else that I have been thinking about is new injectors. So I know some people have upgraded to, I think it's like four hole injectors or 12 hole injectors. I don't know which one exactly, but I've heard those are a good upgrade for these old Jeeps. So I'll have to look into that and do some more research, but that is also something that I am thinking about. And then when we go inside the Jeep here, this is definitely a common problem with basically all XJs, but you can see the sagging headliner right there. So 
eventually want to get that replaced as well so yeah guys that's basically it for this video like i said new cooling parts and i'm very happy with how the jeep is running right now right below 210 even in 100 degree weather so definitely a huge upgrade if you guys have any questions or video suggestions for videos you would like to see in the future make sure to drop those down in the comments below and if you guys like this video or found it entertaining make sure to like comment and subscribe and as always thanks for watching